Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to show how quickly and easily VCarve Pro or Aspire can be used to design and carve a decorative pub or restaurant sign, such as this Ball's Head sign that we see here in the three dimensional view. We're going to look at importing a, a graphic or a design that's been drawn using a CAD package or a graphics package, how to set the size and the material properties, to then calculate the toolpaths needed to VCarve or 3D engrave the decorative sign. Before we start the tutorial, I'm first going to close this file. So file, close. You'll see here that we're using VCAR Pro for the tutorial. The procedure is exactly the same if you're using Aspire or VCAR Pro. I'm going to use the option to open an existing file. You'll see here that the software has opened a folder called Sample Files. The Sample Files folder is automatically added to your PC when you install either VCarve Pro or Aspire. You'll see here that we have a DXF file called Ball's Head. This DXF file was created using a graphics package. I think it was created using Coral Draw, but it could have been drawn or created using many of the other CAD packages such as AutoCAD, Rhino, SolidWorks, etc. The design could also have been created using the drawing tools in a Spiral VCarve Pro. So if we open this file, you'll see that the design opens in our two-dimensional view. And on the left-hand side of the interface, we have the job setup form. On the job setup form, we specify the size of the job or the material that we're going to carve the sign from. So let's say we have a piece of material that's 12 inches by 4.5 inches in the y-axis and we'll make the material half an inch thick. We have an option here to specify the Z0 position and most customers or most users when they're engraving or v-carving will set the, the tip of the cutter, the Z0 position, on the surface of the material. So material surface, we want the X0, Y0 origin to be in the bottom left hand corner of the design. We don't want to use any offsets but we do want the design the geometry in the design to be centered inside our piece of material. At the moment we're working in inches but the software will also work in metric. If we say use metric units we would then specify the, the width to be say 300 millimeters, the height to be 110 millimeters and we'd have a material thickness of say 12 millimeters. In this case we're going to continue working in inches and click OK. So in the two-dimensional view we have the design that we've drawn and imported from a different package. On the left hand side of the interface we have the, the drawing tab open. The drawing tab is where we, we can import additional files so we can open or import additional files and add them to the design that we're working on. There's also drawing tools where you can draw your own designs so you can add features, add uh, objects to your design. You can also add text can edit text, uh, curve text to an arc, there's options for fitting uh, vectors around bitmap images and we have the edit objects area. This is where we have a selection tool, node editing tool, distortion tools, the ability to move selections, to scale the design to a specific size, rotate, mirror, make multiple copies etc. Um, we'll look at these drawing tools and editing tools in more detail in some of the future tutorials. Let's look at the, the zoom and the, the control in the two-dimensional view. Here we've got a, the option to zoom to a box. So zoom to a box, click and drag with the left hand mouse button and we can zoom in on the letter B. We use the selection tool, so select. We can select by clicking on the outer edge of the letter B and we get the dotted purple lines. If we use the node editing tool, so node edit, you'll see that we now have the, the nodes for each for the start and end points of the line. We can toggle from node and selection mode by pressing the letter N on the keyboard. So letter N, selection, letter N again goes to node editing mode. In node editing mode, we can click and drag to change the shape and of a design. We can also say edit undo to go backwards, so undo, undo, and it will go back to its original state. We say 
zoom to fit so zoom to fit this will zoom the whole of the drawing to fit into the available 2d space alternatively if you've got a, a roller middle roller mouse button you can click and roll the mouse button and it will zoom into the area where the cursor is so if you just place the cursor for example if we wish to zoom in on the d place the cursor over the letter d and roll the mouse button and it will zoom into the letter d if you press the letter f on the keyboard it will zoom to fit let's look at the the sizing and scaling tools if we click and select the design in the middle here by clicking and dragging with the left mouse button if i click a second time we get the white transformation handles appearing on the design these allow the cursor to be used to scale the, the objects so you can click and drag you can also click on the corner handles and change the size you can click and drag to make that larger very quick and easy to make the to change the size of the design interactively if we wish this design to be centered in our material again we click um, center of material and it will center the the selected objects in the in the material boundary clicking on the white space will deselect everything so again if we wish to change the size or, or change the size of something if we can click to drag and select if we use the roller mouse button to zoom in if you click a second time we get the white handles if you click and drag holding the shift key it will scale about the center of selection so again click and drag on the white handle top right hand corner with the shift key selected and we can make it larger edit undo we'll put it back to its original position then zoom to fit so we see everything in the two-dimensional view when we're happy with the the general layout of a sign or a project we swap from the drawing tab so here we have the drawing tab on the left hand side of the screen we're going to swap to the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the screen so here we have the the toolpath tab the first icon is the material setup so check the material settings half an inch thick material the clearance height for z1 this is the height above the material that the cutter can move at rapid feed rate and without well if you've got any clamps or any uh, a vice hold in the material then you may wish to to increase the clearance height to make sure the cutter doesn't bash into anything the home position x y and z this is the position that the cutter will typically move to after cutting the project so we're happy with the material setup so click ok next we're going to calculate the tool paths to v-carve or engrave this this design so to do that we open the the V carving or 3D engraving toolpath option. So click, and you'll see here we have the V carving engraving toolpath form. We need to select the vectors that we're going to machine. So I'm going to click top left hand corner, click and drag to select everything. You'll see the lines all turn dotted. With that, those vectors selected, I'm going to select the cutter that we wish to use. The, the tool database has been opened. Here is our selection of cutters. And we can add our own cutters at any point, and we'll look at this, uh, look at the tool database in more detail later on. For this project, we're going to use a, a 90 degree V bit, which is a half an inch diameter. So here on the right hand side, you'll see the tool geometry, half an inch diameter, the included angle. So this angle is 90 degrees. The cutting parameters this is the amount of material, the pass depth is the amount of material that can be removed. In a single pass so for example if we were going to engrave half an inch deep with this tool we could tell the software to do it in two quarter inch passes there's also options for the pass step over and the clearance step over when roughing the feeds and speeds for the cutter so the spindle speed and the cutting feed rates and plunge feed rates these will be set depending on the material that you're cutting if you're cutting very soft materials you can typically get away with running very fast feed rates and if you're cutting very hard or tougher materials you'll probably have to slow the feed rates down depending on uh, on the material in your CNC machine okay so let's go ahead and select this half inch 90 degree v-bit 
select that from the database. If we wish to change the, the, the cutting parameters, we can say edit, and we could typically change the speeds and feeds for this spe specific project without actually changing the parameters in the master tool database. So with the vectors selected, we're going to use this cutter. If we click calculate, the software automatically opens our three-dimensional view. In the three-dimensional view, I can click and drag with the left mouse button to rotate the project. So there's our piece of material. The blue lines are the toolpath that the, the are going to be sent to the machine. If we say preview this toolpath, you'll see that this shows the cutter and how the cutter will run removing the material to form the sign for us. So clicking, twiddling with the left mouse button, if we click and drag, click, sorry, click and push with the right mouse button, we can zoom in. If we click and pull towards us, we zoom away. So zooming in or out with push or pull. If we click and hold the left and the right mouse buttons, we can pan. So we can pan to the B, push with the right mouse button to zoom in. We can change the, the preview material. So let's change to a different type of material. Let's say we want this to be soft oak. We could change the fill color. Let's say so we want this to be a dark yellow or goldish color. Change it to a, a dark blue. So we can experiment with different materials and different fill colors. We could also save the image as a JPEG or a bitmap file. So we could say, okay, we have a customer that's interested in looking at this. Save the preview image. Save this as maybe a JPEG file. Save the file to disk and then email it to your client or customer. If we close the preview form for a moment, you'll see here we've got an option to cal estimate or calculate the estimated machining time. This gives us an approximate cutting time for the project. So here you'll see that it's just under five minutes to cut this particular sign. Close. When we're happy with the, the results, we then save the toolpath ready for running on the CNC machine. So save the toolpath. Select the post processor for our, our, our CNC machine. So if you're running Mac 3, you'd use the Mac 3 post processor. If you're running a, a standard G-code based control, you'd probably say, OK, let's use the G-code arcs the inch version, so save the g-code file, save the toolpath, give the toolpath a name, save the file to disk, and this is now ready for running on the CNC machine. Close the save form for a moment. Now the toolpath can be very easily edited. If we say, go back to the drawing tab on the left hand side of the interface, so swap to drawing, here we've got two options to split the screen. We could say, okay, we want to tile the two-dimensional view and the three-dimensional view. So if we tile them horizontally, you'll see in the top of the screen, we've got the 2D design. In the bottom of the screen, we've got the three-dimensional view. Let's say we wish to edit this design. So I'm going to <clears throat> select the outer rectangle. I'm going to use the node editing tool, place the cursor over this vertical span and you'll see that the little triangle has a little squiggle appears underneath the, the selection cursor. If I click the right hand mouse button, say convert this to an arc, if we zoom out a little bit, you'll see there we've got our arc. I can click and drag the arc back onto the design. If we do the same on the right hand side, right hand mouse button, convert to arc, click and drag. Let's leave the arc like so. So we've changed the the outer edge of the size slightly. Now if we say toggle back to the toolpath view on the right hand side of the screen, select the toolpath in the list, if we double click with the left mouse button the vectors are automatically selected and if we now recalculate the toolpath, reset the preview, preview this toolpath, you'll see now that we've got a different outer border, different shape for our sign. Close the preview form. If you have a, a very large monitor, a very wide monitor, you can. it's possible to have both the drawing tab and the toolpaths pinned open at the same time. So with this, if we click in the two-dimensional view, 
press the letter F, it will zoom to fit. In the three-dimensional view, we can twiddle, we can change the preview materials as we've already discussed. So click and zoom, select a different material, select a different fill color, like so. When you're happy with the project, we'd recommend that you save it to disk so it can be edited at any time in the future. So we would say file, save as, give the file a name, and then it can be opened at any time in the future. And you will have the, the design as it was uh, modified and the toolpath will also be there so you can recalculate the toolpath if necessary. Thank you for listening to this tutorial.